Hey guys, so this is the uh, part one of our linear functions review. Uh, it's the fourth uh, module in our Algebra 1 skills unit. And it, it's all about linear functions. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to determine the rate of change or slope of a situation and graph uh, in a variety of ways linear functions. So there's three different ways. I'm going to discuss all three. So the first thing we need to talk about is rate of change. You guys know it as slope, uh, but it's definitely more than just slope or rise over run. This is used in physics and science. Uh, even driving down the highway, you use rate of change for miles per hour, that sort of thing. So uh, in this example, we give you a table. Okay. Now, we always have things, all right, it's always situated x, y, first thing. And then this is going up, okay, the first data set went up 26, this went up 19, this went up 19, this went up 20. Okay, so that's how the x's are changing. The y's are going up about every one hour or 60 minutes. I'll say one hour every one hour, okay? One hour, one hour. So the rate of change is how much is it changing over time? So um, in this case, okay, it's going up about 20 degrees per hour, right? So you can say, all right, it's 20 degrees per, for every one hour, or every one hour, it's 20 degrees. It depends. Usually, we, we say that the time is always on the bottom, OK? Uh, miles per hour, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, this would be the correct answer for that, 20 degrees per hour. But each time you create a table, all you got to find is the change from one step to the other, and then make a fraction out of it. Now, what you're used to is more like this, where we give you two points of data, and it could be anything, and you have to find the slope of it, or rate of change. And this is the slope formula, the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So... First step is 5 minus a negative 1 over negative 4 minus 2. Now, remember it's the minus, so minus minus plus there. So we get 6 over negative 6. So the slope, or m, is negative 1, because we always have to reduce slope to the lowest terms. So that's if you're given two points. If you're given a graph, all you have to do is rise over run. Rise over run. Okay, the rise is the up down movement. The run is the how far right. Okay, so you always read graphs left to right. If you choose two points, okay, you want to choose corners. Key is corners. Okay, I went down one over two. Okay, so since I went down 1, that's a negative over 2. All right, so that's my slope for that. And you can complete the next practice problems for that. Uh, what I want to talk about is this second one here. Okay, so if I plug this in, okay, I got 4 minus 4 over 3 minus 6. That's 0 over negative 3. The slope of that is zero. Anytime you have a slope of zero, think of it as like a flat piece of, uh, piece of land, okay, or a floor. That slope is zero because it's not rising whatsoever. That is what we call a horizontal line. Now the reverse of that is if we have something like negative three over zero. If you plug it into the calculator, it's not going to come up with a good answer. That's where we say it's undefined. Okay. Every time you say undefined, think of it as a cliff. It's a straight drop. Okay. Um, so that is the difference between those two types of slopes. Those are the special cases. 
So our next part is about graphing linear functions. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. Uh, the most common way is to put it into y equals mx plus b form. But the fail-safe way of doing it is always to create a table. So whenever you're confused on how to graph anything, and we're going to be graphing lots of things in this class, linear functions, quadratic, exponential, logarithmic, radical, absolute value, we're going to have lots of uh, functions in there. And whenever you're confused, I would advise you make a table. So how do you do that? I'll do this one, and then I'll do the y equals mx plus b. x, y. It's a table. And I get to choose my inputs, my x's. That's my independent variable. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay? What I do is I plug in negative 2 to the x. 3 times negative 2 plus 2y equals 6. I would get negative 6 plus 2y equals 6. I would add 6 on both sides. 2y equals 12. I divide by 2. y is 6. So now I have 6. Pretty easy? Okay. Well, now I repeat the process, only now with negative 1. Okay, so that's negative 3 plus 2y equals 6. I add 3 on both sides. 2y equals 9 divided by 2. y is 4.5. Done. What I can do is I can continue this down, and I'll keep plugging in these numbers. If I plug in 0, this whole term cancels out, so I divide by 2. This is going to be 3. This is going to be... Uh, 1.5, and then this is going to be 0. So that's when I plug all of these numbers in. But what I've done is I have generated all these points that now I can plot. So I would do negative 2, 6, okay, it's a little off my grid, that's fine. Negative 1, 4.5, 0, 3, 1, 1 1.5, and 2, 0. I can now graph that line, and I'm done. And no matter what, I can always create a table if I'm confused on how to graph. Now, the most common way of doing it is not using the table, but it's to put it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So how do I do that? The first step is to solve for y. So that's why we did the solving of equations. We had to remember how to isolate one variable. We need to get that variable alone. So in this case, I'm going to solve for y. So the furthest thing away from y on the same side is this 3x. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. These cancel out. I'm left with 2y equals, and here's the trick. I'm going to reverse it so it's a little bit easier in the future. Negative 3x plus 6. Because usually it's y equals mx, so the x is always first after the uh, equal sign. Now, when I divide by 2, remember I have to divide everything by 2. So each individual thing. y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 3. So I can make a fraction out of these numbers and just put x on the side. It's fine. Now I can plot. So y equals mx plus b. This is my m. This is my b. So I begin graphing at the y-intercept, which is at 3. So I go 0, 3. Oh, look. It matched up with my table. And then what I do is I would follow my slope, my rise over my run. My rise is negative 3, which means I'm going to go down 3, and then to the right. The bottom number is always to the right. So I would go down 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Boom! I got those two points. I can also continue it out if I want. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 
And now I have the exact same line I did with the table. A little bit easier work. Now, I'll show you again with this one. Again, I have to solve for y. Okay? So I have to get y alone. So what is happening to y? Well, I'm subtracting 2x. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add 2x to both sides. The 2x's cancel out. I have y equals 2x plus 1. So this now becomes my b. That's where I'm going to begin. It's going to be a 1. And this is my m, which is written as a fraction, 2 over 1. Anytime you see a whole number, it's over 1. So now I'm going to go up to 1, 2, over 1. And I can also, because I know the line's going this way, I can also go down 2 to the left 1, exact reverse. And now I can graph. Now I've graphed those equations. Now there is a special case for this. I want to make sure that everyone is clear. For 4, it's already in y equals mx plus b form. But what you don't see is the b it means that the b is at 0, plus 0. We don't write a 0. So that line intercept is right at the origin with a slope of 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. And I graph that. For 5, I want to point out, again, when I'm solving, I would subtract x from both sides. Remember, there's an indivisible 1 there. I'm left with a negative y. You have to carry down that sign. Equals a negative x minus 1. Now, if you think about it, there's this invisible 1 in front of the y. So I have to get rid of that negative 1 in front of it. I just want y there. So I'm going to divide by negative 1. And when I divide by negative 1, I have to divide everything by negative 1. y equals negative divided by negative is a positive. Negative divided by negative is a positive 1. Because these are two separate terms, that's why I put the addition sign in there. So now my y-intercept is at 1. In my slope, there's an invisible number there again. It's going to be 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. I have that graph right there. So please complete the practice problems attached with this notes, and then uh, come in next class with any questions you have. Thank you.